So again, making it accessible. Um, I think we talked a lot about stormwater last night when I sat down with the mayor and, and some of her cabinet um, and some of the people from Dowling. And I think it's important to just touch upon some stormwater stuff because I think we're both in the same boat, literally and figuratively, in dealing with stormwater as a resource, not as a waste. Um, so we started with a water agenda in 2003 that kind of laid out our principles about what we thought needed to happen with conserving water, um, with um, reducing pollution, with managing stormwater, um, and with engaging Chicagoans in, in all of these efforts. So it built off of, um, oops, sorry. It went from the water agenda to a guide to stormwater best management practices. I think I'll have those tonight, too. And the environmental action agenda kind of moving, moving our water um, efforts forward. So the simple thing, disconnect your downspouts. Um, We've had wars between different departments, not letting people disconnect their downspouts. Well, it's not as simple as you think. You don't want the water to go right into uh, what we call the gangway between the two houses and cause any flooding in somebody's foundation, needless to say. Um, but there are a lot of things that you can do. And we've actually done a formula to look at how much square footage you have on your roof and how much you can gather um, below and the different ways you can capture that water, rain gardens, et cetera. Um, so we have a rain garden program that we started several years ago. Uh, people could come for a training at Chicago Center for Green Technology. They'd leave with um, drastically reduced um, price plants. Uh, they'd probably spend $75, get 150 rain garden plants, and we gave them a range of different designs to use. Um, so that's part of our programming. Um, and we call, this the, we call these the um, roll out the barrel days. Isn't that fun? Roll out the barrel. OK. Come on. Um, so we go into the neighborhoods and we do these uh, big, exciting kind of celebrations around block club events, et cetera, uh, to get people to use rain barrels. And then the community comes together and helps dis disconnect the downspouts, put in the rain barrels. Rain barrels, 55 gallons of water. We always say, why take from the lake what you can get from the sky? Uh, that's our saying, because Lake Michigan is not an infinite resource. Uh, so use that water to water your garden. It's better than the chlorinated water anyway. Uh, use it to wash your pet. Some people think that's blasphemy that I'd say that. Um, or your car, okay? Um, but so rain barrels are a great, easy way to get people involved um, uh, in getting engaged. We're also doing a lot on permeable paving. So our Green Alley program launched um, two years ago with some model alleys. We did six alleys around the city. This was our very first alley that we did about five years ago. Uh, it has some issues. It's got this um, recycled plastic coil that goes throughout, and then you have... Um, gravel that goes throughout it as well and a trench down the middle and the capacity of this it was only utilizing one-third of the capacity from that entire block of houses so we could have somehow moved more water into it because it drained so well um, some of the problems with this was cats thought it was a nifty little kitty litter box um, and it was kind of messy on the edge so we've kind of redesigned it and done some interlocking pavers on the entrances etc uh, but we have all kinds of different types of permeable paving uh, at our center and throughout the city now. And our alleys have not only permeable paving, but high albedo uh, paving, again, um, mitigating the urban heat island context by cooling. Um, and the coolest thing is a sustainable street that we're designing this year that will have photocatalytic concrete. Anybody want to take a guess at what that means? Photo, sun, catalytic, catalytic change, right? So the sun comes down, there's a chemical reaction in the first two inches of the concrete, and it, it eats the first eight feet of particulate matter, smog, pollution in the air. How cool is that, right? On top of it, it's permeable. So we have permeable asphalt and concrete now, and now we're looking into this photocatalytic concrete, which is very expensive right now, but again, build it, prove it, you know, demonstrate it, and if you build a market, you can really dramatically reduce the prices like we have for green roofs. 